Hello, how are you? The net results are out. Since morning, it has been uh, so much conversation, phone calls, messages. So many of you have cleared net. So many of you have messaged us. It feels overwhelming to receive your messages. But at the same time, the students who haven't, please don't lose hope. This is just the start of your beautiful moving towards your career. Yes, if not this time, next time. Believe in yourself and you can do it. Yes, how are you? Today's play, very beautiful play. Not meaningless for me at least. It's called Waiting for Godot. Waiting for Godot, a tragic comedy in two acts. It was originally written in French with the title Et attend Attendant Godot. Et Attendant Godot. It was premiered in French in the year 1953, whereas in English in the year 1955. Playwright, you know him very well, Samuel Barclay Beckett, an Irish writer who lived from 1906 to 1989, a key figure in the theater of the absurd. Nothing happens, nobody comes, nobody goes. Life is meaningless. What is the purpose of life? Everything is absurd, nothing makes sense. Literary period, well, Samuel Beckett belonged or he was a late modernist writer. So we can say Waiting for Godot belongs to late modernism. There are only five characters in this play. They are Ladimir, who's also called Didi, Estrogen, who's called Gogo, then there's Lucky, then there's Pozzo, then there's a boy, and finally there's a Godo or a Godo who is always absent from the play. But you will hear his name so many times, Godo, 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 but where is Godo? When will he come? Nobody knows, okay? And first, before starting the play, many people speculate that Godo is God, but Samuel Beckett himself said that no. When I was writing this play, it was not in my mind. Because as you know, I wrote the play in French. In French, God is called Dieu. D-I-E-U. Dieu. If God was in my mind, I would have written Dieu. So no, God was not in my mind when I was writing this play. But again, Samuel Beckett says that I enter a trance when I write. I don't know. There is this subconscious playing inside my mind. So whatever. But I don't know. Easy. So please don't think Godot is God. No, no. Okay, let's start. I have tried to encapsulate beautiful images. These images are from various uh, theater versions of the play. As you know, this play has been premiered so many times. Premiered as in it has been enacted so many times, you know, on the stage. In fact, in India also, Nasiruddin Shah played a character in this play. So yeah, all the photographs are from the theater enactments, okay? Setting will be the same. First, it will be in two acts. Setting will be the same throughout. What is it setting? On a country road by a leafless tree. This is act one. Let's start. Vladimir and Estrogen are standing in their bowler hats and shabby clothing. Bowler hats are these French hats, okay? Shabby clothing, not nicely dressed, okay? But we don't know whether they are rich or poor, whether they have traveled the world or not. We don't know, okay? Vladimir is heavier, whereas Astrogan is taller. They have known each other for 50 years. Astrogan complains to Vladimir about last night when he was lying in a ditch and received beating from many unknown people. Then the two, they blather. Blather means they utter nonsense. They speak gibberish using Hiberno-English idioms. Hiberno basically is Irish-English idioms. So, you know, we again not sure. Maybe they are Irish. They are not English, that's for sure, because they are even talking, uh, you know, naming the currency as francs, okay? And they are using a lot of Irish-English idioms. So probably they are Irish, but we don't know. Okay, understood about Vladimir and Estrogen. Now, the audience discover that Vladimir and Estrogen are waiting for somebody called Godot, but there are complications. They do not know who is Godot. They do not know how does this Godot look. They do not know will he even arrive or not. 
will he arrive today tomorrow will he ever arrive they don't know but they have no choice they are just waiting there because vladimir and estrogen say that nothing is to be done estrogen is literally struggling with his boots they are struggling with their hats hat is a very important symbol in this play okay and also estrogen is somebody who keeps on sleeping and dreaming sleeping and dreaming but vladimir wakes him up again and again saying that don't sleep i feel very lonely without you and when estrogen says i had a nightmare vladimir says don't tell me about your nightmares no 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 but you just don't sleep okay easy now meet the other two characters in the play they are podzo the master and lucky the slave as the day passes the two men named podzo and lucky arrive podzo is on his way to a fair or a fete to sell lucky who is his slave here the theme is colonialism yes although podzo and lucky have known each other for 60 years yet the master podzo controls his silent slave lucky by a long rope can you see here a long rope is tied around lucky's neck and podzo literally jerks and tugs you know this rope if lucky acts slow or lethargic and as you can see lucky is carrying podzo suitcase lucky carries a stool they just wait then because they see vladimir and estrogen they wait there and they you know literally estrogen feels that are you godo he asked podzo are you godo so podzo says no i'm not then he sits lucky gives him his stool he eats his chicken blah blah you know all these things happen podzo show of status status like he feels that you know he's a wealthy man podzo is like a hypomaniac personality okay very hyper talks highly about himself he smokes a pipe made by cap and peterson which is actually dublin's best known tobacco okay cap and peterson were dublin's best known tobacconists now here i'll tell you a uh, podzo calls his pipe a briar briar is like a shrub whereas estrogen calls it dudeen dudeen is like general word here the theme is social standing high class low class low class okay understood till here now lucky's dance and speech lucky shows a dog like devotion to his master lucky is a slave who hardly speaks actually he speaks only one time in the play because podzo tells him that dance sing do art think for vladimir and estrogen why does podzo say that because podzo is very happy with vladimir and estrogen okay so lucky dances spouts a philosophical monologue which is actually a flood of meaningless gibberish here the theme is the theater of the absurd right podzo and lucky after this they depart and estrogen and vladimir is like shocked they like what did we just witness and then Estrogen wants to go but Vladimir reminds him no no we have to wait for Godo Vladimir says yes Vladimir says i'm very hungry then Estrogen you sorry Estrogen Estrogen says i'm very hungry so then Vladimir says okay i will give you carrots but can you imagine when he reaches out for his pocket Vladimir can only find turnips and then Estrogen gets very angry i'm hungry for carrot i'm hungry for carrot so literally Vladimir finally is able to get a carrot and he gives it to Estrogen okay here i want to talk a little bit about these major characters characteristics like who is vladimir who is estrogen although we don't have too much detail about them but little bit that we know i want to discuss vladimir who is also called didi he stands most of the times he is restless he is also the more intellectual one he looks up at the sky and contemplates about religion metaphysics he has reason on the other hand estrogen or gogo is quite inactive most of the time he's sitting on a stone he's sleeping he's daydreaming he has nightmares he's only concerned about eating also he has like a short term memory loss for example when vladimir asks estrogen that do you remember the gospels do you remember the bible Estrogen replies that all he remembers is the colored maps of the holy land and that he had planned to honeymoon by the dead sea and estrogen also feels that he may be suffering from alzheimer's disease and then you know 
it is it is like this crazy scene where both of them are just standing they don't know what to do and they are thinking that godo is about to come godo is about to come estrogen wants to leave but ladimir tells him no no we are tied to godo we have to wait for him okay then another character of the play comes his name is boy only boy soon a boy shows up he was actually standing when podzo and lucky were there but the boy was very very afraid of podzo's whip okay so he waited for podzo and lucky to go the boy reveals to ladimir and estrogen that he works for mr godo as a goat herd you know he mends the goats of mr godo and then the boy just generally says i was not here the previous day i have a brother who's a shepherd who is regularly beaten by godo but godo does not beat me the boy says this to estrogen you know ladimir and then the boy further says that godo feeds us that is me and my brother and he allows us to sleep in his hay loft okay now the boy is a messenger from godo and godo has sent a message that he will not be arriving tonight but he will arrive tomorrow Ladimir then you know very excitedly asks about Godo his appearance and other things from the boy but the boy who is polite yet shy who replies only in yes sir no sir he does not say anything clearly he just runs away you know he gets out of the stage so then Ladimir and Estrogen announce that because Godo is not coming today we will also leave but do you know they don't leave they just stay on stage without moving and act one of waiting for godo gets over here can we start with act 2 act 2 is another act where nothing happens again in act 1 also nothing happens in act 2 also nothing will happen setting the next day on a country road by a tree with few leaves in one day leaves have grown on this tree can you imagine ladimir and estrogen are still waiting for godo and it is the same you know it is the same scene like ladimir tells uh, estrogen that how are you they are very happy to meet meet each other they embrace each other estrogen says that i was beaten up last night i had a nightmare ladimir tells him don't tell me about your nightmares and then they talk about a macaron country which estrogen does not remember ladimir says remember the macaron country estrogen says i remember nothing then ladimir uh, you know tells estrogen that uh, we met podzo we met lucky estrogen says i remember nothing and then they find hat of lucky there hat of lucky and they literally play a game which is called as you know podzo and lucky game and then again podzo and lucky reappear Yes in second act lucky and podzo reappear podzo the master lucky the slave but this time the circumstances are different podzo has become blind he cannot see and lucky has become mute dumb he cannot talk oh god not just that podzo cannot remember meeting ladimir and estrogen who themselves are also confused as i told you estrogen himself is confused that when did he meet podzo last time and then you know they are like uh, uh when did, since when did you get blind they ask podzo and podzo says that uh, the blind have no notion of time <laughs> and after this the true travelers they leave okay they come and they go after this the boy again enters remember the boy from last day but this boy has come with a message that godo will not be coming today he says i did not come yesterday now now you know Ladimir is getting angry. You came yesterday. Boy says, "No, I did not come yesterday. Yes, I have a brother. He is sick. Yes, I am a messenger of Godo, but I did not come yesterday. I am coming here for the first time." So then Ladimir gets very angry that you know, remember us so that tomorrow you don't say the same thing. Imagine in Act Three also the same thing will happen, but then there is no Act Three in this play. Ladimir gets angry, asks what Godo does. The boy replies, "He does nothing." sir the boy says godo has white beard but i'm not sure after this the boy runs and exits from the stage oh god we are coming to the end of act 2 and the end of this play ladimir and estrogen don't know what to do they have been waiting and waiting and waiting for godo who has not come who will not come who might come tomorrow or might not come they decide to commit suicide by hanging on the tree with their belt so they literally take the belt but then it breaks 
they're like, okay, tomorrow we're going to return with a rope and hang ourselves on the tree. But they barely move from their places. They are still there. They will still be there. They will wait for Godot. Imagine two scenes, three scenes, four scenes, five scenes. Samuel Beckett repeats the same thing if there will be more scenes. This is the theater of the absurd. What literature? I liked it. I love waiting for Godot. In fact, I have seen a play of it on YouTube. If you have time, you should see it. It is a classic. Yes, this is Hina from Team Walat. Few points to ponder. Samuel Beckett is a late modernist writer. His works are bleak, impersonal, tragicomic, coupled with black comedy, nonsense. And as his career progressed, he also experimented with minimalism, aestheticism, stream of consciousness. And in 1969, Samuel Beckett received a Nobel Prize in Literature, quote, for his writing, which in new forms for the novel and drama, in the destitution of modern man acquires it its elevation, okay? And also the boy who appears, he addresses Vladimir as Mr. Albert. And we are done with waiting for Godot. Take very good care of yourself. If you love this summary, of course, you have to subscribe to our channel and share it with your friends and relatives. Bye-bye.